Thank you. Um, my name is Charles Aka from ISA, University of Ghana. Uh, I'll present the Ghanaian experience with industrialization. Um, and I would like to, in terms of overview, give a bit introduction of where Ghana is and uh, the evolution of industry, uh, the structure of the industrial sector, and uh, conclude with some emerging policy issues. In terms of introduction, um, Ghana's economic growth over the last uh, decade uh, has been among the most rapid in Africa, uh, and actually is also well uh, in good standing among the fastest growing economies in the emerging countries. Uh, the economy has experienced moderate but very consistent growth over the past 25 years, uh, averaging about 5% uh, between the 1990 and 2010. With the new found oil uh, and gas coming on stream, uh, Ghana is well positioned to become one of Africa's leading uh, commodities powerhouses. Uh, and oil revenue is expected to eventually contribute an equivalent of about 20% of total national revenue. Uh, I'll present later on how the oil sector is impacting the industrial sector in general. Currently, it is estimated that an average uh, over the medium term, Ghana will be growing uh, at least 8% per annum, uh, which should take us to the upper middle income status. We already are the at the lower middle income status. Uh, when the impact of oil and gas development is taken into consideration, the average GDP is projected to grow at about 11.3% per annum over the medium term. Uh, for the attainment of economic transformation, uh, the industrial sector is very key, and uh, that sector is projected to grow at an average uh, of about 20.3% uh, over the middle term per annum. Um, in terms of evolution of industry, uh, I look at that uh, in blocks uh, over the historical period. Uh, the pre-economic reform uh, program period uh, from 1957, when we got independence, up to the 1960s. Uh, prior to 1957, uh, when Ghana gained political independence, the industrial sector was very small, uh, it was mainly manufacturing, uh, and that contributed very little to economic growth. Uh, the sector had been underdeveloped mainly because the colonial power were interested in extracting raw materials from the former Gold Coast, which, which is currently Ghana, and also for creating an economic system which was heavily dependent on manufactured products from Britain. So by the time the Nkrumah government got independence in 1957, uh, the, the industrial sector was already very small, very underdeveloped, and the Nkrumah had a socialist agenda and also saw industrialization as key factor to the modernization and the development of the country. The extensive industrialization program that Nkrumah pursued was based on the import substitution industrialization strategy uh, and it was aimed at transforming the industrial sector and to reduce the dependence of the economy on the colonial powers, Britain, and also on other foreign economies uh, because of Nkrumah's socialist agenda. Uh, priority to the import substitution industrialization strategy uh, was believed that it will help get rid of the distorting effect of the colonial system that it inherited and also to escape from the dependence on primary export and to break the vicious cycle of poverty, uh, according to Kilik 2010. The import substitution industrialization strategy involved basically the development of large scale, capital intensive manufacturing industries owned and managed by the state. The state played a very large role. Uh, state owned enterprises were involved in domestic production of previously imported consumer goods, processing of export uh, of primary products, mainly agriculture and mining and the expansion and development of building materials and electrical and electronic and machinery industries. And uh, the government also invested heavily in the infrastructure to be able to support this industrial agenda, a uh, lot of road, and up to today, uh, a big chunk of Ghana's 
infrastructure uh, was developed during the period of the first president, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, the motorway, the Akosum border, uh, and so forth and so on. In terms of the success of Nkrumah's industrial strategy, uh, the, the, during the 1960s, there was evidence that uh, the manufacturing sector uh, was picking up. Uh, it also shifted the import structure away from consumer goods to intermediate, and more importantly, capital goods to be able to support uh, his industrialization agenda. The manufacturing sector, for example, grew from a 2% share of GDP in 1957 at independence to about 9% by 1969. Over the period, I mean, during the 1960s, manufacturing output grew at a rate of about 13% per annum. The share of manufacturing in total industrial output grew from 10% in 1960 to about 14% in 1970. Industrial sector employment grew by an average of 8% per annum with total employment in the manufacturing sector alone increasing by nearly 90% uh, between 1962 and 1970. In, if you look at the table uh, here, in terms of share and growth rate of gross manufacturing output by ownership, you see that the wholly state-owned enterprise uh, grew from about the, the share of about 11.8% uh, in 1962. By 1967, this was about 24.1%. Uh, and the joint state and private owner owned enterprise grew from about 7% to about 17.5% between 1962 and 1967. Uh, you will see a concomitant uh, decline in private ownership from about 80%, uh, 81% to about 58%. And this was, this was intentional uh, because the government was really wanted to, to control the economy. So they were, they were taking over private enterprises and they had policies that were not very friendly uh, to uh, private-led uh, private uh, growth or development. In terms of growth, uh, you see the same thing that the state-owned enterprise grew uh, from about 34% to 36%, and there was a decline of private ownership from 20.5% to 7.1%. So by the 1970s, uh, the uh, import substitution industrial strategy uh, began to face some structural uh, problems. The economy had severe balance of payment problems, uh, which led to the CD being devalued by about 90%. Uh, as a result of the balance of payment problems, production and capacity utilization in most of the import substituting industries fell over the period from the mid 1970s to uh, 1983, uh, just before the structure adjustment was introduced. Uh, for instance, you will see that the average capacity utilization over the period from 1970 to 1977 was in the range of just about 43 to 50%, and it became worse in 79 and 1980 at about 33% and 25% respectively. And by the close of 1982, the average capacity utilization had further declined to 21%. Uh, so as a, as a result of that, you see that in this table, uh, industry uh, was declined from about 19.3% uh, from 1970 to about 11.1% 1984 as a percent of GDP. And uh, uh, that's also in line with the manufacturing, which also declined from about 12.7% to about 7.6%, uh, and services picked up uh, from 27% to about 35%, and agriculture also picked up. So during the period where the structure adjustment uh, was introduced um, from 1983, uh, and part of it was the economic reform program uh, to 19, 2000, the main policy initiatives here under the economic reform program for the industrial sector was the restructuring of the industrial and allied sectors, addressing the constraints faced under the import substitution industry strategy, increasing the production of manufactured goods through greater use of existing capacity, and the removal of production bottlenecks in the efficient industries. And these initiatives were based on a new industrialization strategy that placed more emphasis on, on the uh, more internationally competitive industrial sector as opposed to what we had under the Nkrumah regime. Uh, you see from table three that the industrial sector in general and the manufacturing sector in particular responded quite positively and strongly to the reforms. 
uh, you see the first period, the period just prior to the introduction of the economic reform program between 81 and 83, there was a decline uh, in industry from about 13 uh, percent. And the period immediately after the structure adjust, the adjustment, 84 to 88, moved from negative 12.5 uh, percent to about 11.2 percent. And that was the same for manufacturing, uh, from negative 8 percent to about 12.7 percent. And the mining and quarrying, the same electricity, the same self construction. Uh, but this was not sustained uh, by the end of 2000, uh, but we still have a positive growth of industry about 4.3 percent and manufacturing of about 4.1 percent. In terms of, of uh, this graph, you see the, the various uh, contribution up to 1984, you will see the, the, the fluctuation and the bad performance of uh, both industry, manufacturing, basically all the sectors. Uh, and from 1984, since the structure adjustment was introduced, uh, things have remained quite stable, uh, even though it's, it could have been done better. We're still in the historical development. The post-economic reform program from 2000 uh, to 2012, but I break it down to two periods. So the first five years, there was a shift in the focus of Ghana's industrial strategy. The policy strategies within the industrial sector were adopted uh, and they were aimed at promoting agro-processing this time, facilitating the development of commercially viable export and domestic market-oriented enterprises uh, in the rural areas, improving agricultural marketing and enhancing access to export markets, improving the competitiveness of domestic industrial products and promoting industrial subcontracting and partnership exchange. Uh, you will see that the industrial sector responded positively uh, also to these initiatives. Industrial growth was buoyant in 2002, increasing from about 2.9% in 2001 to 4.7% in 2002, and then to 5.1% in 2004. That's the first five years uh, after the economic reform program. Uh, you will see that industry uh, grew from about 2.9% to about 7.6%. Manufacturing also moving from a growth rate of about 3.7% in 2001 to about 5% and money inquiring from negative 1.6% to about 6.3%. Uh, no. Now, interestingly, the, the uh, re relatively strong growth experienced by the subsectors of industry did not have um, any, it did not transform to any higher contribution to, of industry to GDP. Uh, you see that the contribution of industry to GDP remained quite uh, s stable between 19, 2001 to 2005 around 24, 25%, and the same for manufacturing. Um, the current structure of the industrial sector, uh, I, I am basically looking at the, the, from the 2006 to the current period of about 2012. Uh, the Ghana's industrial sector, after the rebasing of our economy that led us to lower middle income status, uh, consists of five subsectors now the manufacturing sector, the construction sector, the mining and the quarrying, the electricity and water and sewage subsectors. Before uh, this rebasing in 2010, the electricity and water and sewage subsectors had been lumped together, but they have now been split. Uh, you will see that the period between 2006 to 2007, uh, you see industry uh, has now declined from about, 20, uh, increased from about 20.8% to about 27.6 percent, and manufacturing is is on the decline. Uh, rather, mining and quarrying uh, is on the rise from 2.8 percent to 8.8 percent. Uh, the reason is that from 2010, you will see that in bracket under the uh, mining and quarrying is the involvement of the oil sector now. Uh, so, uh, the oil sector contributed 0.4 percent. Uh, to the 2.3% in 2010, and uh, by, by just last year, the oil sector is actually contributing about 6.9% of the 8.8% of, of industry. So basically, uh, mining uh, is picking up uh, to, and manufacturing is on the decline. Again, on the, in that last period of 2006 to 2012, in terms of growth rate of industry and its subsectors, uh, industry itself, 
uh, was growing at about 9.5% in 2006. Uh, but in 2011, because of the oil, industry grew at 41.1%. Uh, that's the base effect. That's when the oil exports began. Uh, and the manufacturing, uh, also around about 13%. And the mining and quarrying, 206%, uh, because of the oil production. Uh, the, the rest are not very interesting. Uh, but this one could not be sustained, of, of course. The provisional estimate for 2012 is that industry has, has come back to 7%. Manufacturing is, is down from the 13% to 4.3%, and the mining and quarrying from 206% to 5%. Uh, this is the effects of oil. The, the last um, section is the relative contribution of the subsectors to industrial GDP. Uh, you see manufacturing as a result of the oil is declined from 49% of GDP to now about 24% of GDP provisional estimate for 2012, and the mining and quarrying uh, is moved from 13.5% of GDP to about 32% of GDP because of the oil. Uh, in terms of size distribution of the current uh, uh, firms in the industry, the number of establishments within the industrial sector has increased significantly between 87 and 2003. This is where we have, we have two industrial sensors. Uh, one was in 87 and uh, one in 2003, so that's that's what we can compare. Uh, is the number of establishments have moved from about 8,600 to about 26,000 firms. This should be more uh, if we have current data. Uh, so that's quite a lot. This represents over 200% uh, increase over the period 87 to 2003. And the total number of firms in both years, uh, over 90% were into the manufacturing sector. Um, and in terms of size distribution, uh, you will see that the Ghanaian industrial sector appears to be primarily comprised of micro and small firms who make up about 94% of the total number of firms in the sector. And the medium firms are just about 4% uh, and the, uh, just about 2.3% are large. So it's mainly micro um, firms. In terms of employment, uh, also again for the period where we have data, total number of employed, uh, has moved from about 1 million, 1.1 million to about just 1.2 million over that 2000, 2006. Uh, and as a share of total employment in the industry, this is just about 15%, actually declined to about 14.2%. Uh, and then you see that manufacturing uh, actually is, uh, is the share has of manufacturing employment to industry employment is moved from 69% to 80%. Uh, mining and quarrying is declined. Uh, so, in terms of special distribution, probably this is the last table is, is one of the things that manufacturing is, uh, uh, is mainly, in fact, actually the industrial activities are mainly concentrated in two regions, the Greater Accra region uh, and the Ashanti region. Uh, so, uh, they contribute close to about 50% of all the activities in manufacturing, also in industry. And all the other regions, uh, basically there's almost nothing going on especially in the northern poor region, the last three regions, northern, upper east, upper west region. Uh, and that's, that's quite a problem. Well, to conclude with the emerging policy issues that are currently under discussion, the top three issues uh, that emerge from the debate are how to empower the private sector, especially the small and the medium enterprises, to expand productive employment and technological capacity within a highly competitive manufacturing sector, and how to promote agro-based industrial development to ensure value addition to manufacturers and Ghana's tradition, traditional and non-traditional exports. And finally, how to promote the spatial distribution uh, of industries away from the current situation of over-concentration in industries within the urban areas. Uh, I think I'll stop here. Thank you.